Hello and welcome to National Drone Safety Awareness Week. My name is Katie Gilmore. I am a volunteer with the FAA safety team as a drone pro for the Minnesota region. Um, as everyone finishes uh, dialing in and getting started here, I'm gonna set out a poll. So it should pop up on your screen uh, right about now. So if you're logged in, go ahead and, and do the poll and then we'll get started in about one more minute. We've got 70% voted. Who's out there that hasn't voted yet? Uh, poll in progress. What is your experience level with drones? Are you experienced? Are you just getting started? Are you looking to get started? Or are you curious about drones and you are here to find out some more? All right, we will close the poll. So it looks, uh, I'm not sure if everybody else can see the responses, but we're about 50% experienced folks out there and 50% that are just getting started or hoping to get started in the near future. So perfect. Uh, well, welcome again. My name is Katie. I am uh, the FA Safety Rep for the region here in Minnesota, and it is the first ever National Drone Safety Awareness Week. Um, so we are um, here to share some tips with you and talk a little bit about um, what the what our law enforcement folks are doing um, in our region. So I'll switch over here to the PowerPoint. And we just have a few housekeeping items first and then we will get into the law enforcement presentation. There we go. Okay, so oh. Here we go. Drone Safety Awareness Week. So um, the FAA designated this week as Drone Safety Awareness Week, and they want to highlight, do a couple of things. One of the things they want to do is highlight the key sectors of the drone community. Um, and those, they specifically laid out a few target areas. Public safety was the first one. Uh, business, um, including real estate photography, um, inspections, insurance, etc. cetera. Um, agriculture and uh, drone uh, what we people are doing with drones and agriculture. Um, the fourth one is actually um, medical delivery and package delivery, but we are going to kind of switch gears a little bit and go with natural resources since we've got a lot of activity going on here in Minnesota with respect to that. And then Friday we'll cap off with STEM. Um, we've got one of our school districts here that will be, will be presenting on that. So we want to highlight some some things of what people are doing in our community, and then also uh, touch on a couple of safety initiatives. And another reason for this is just to connect with other pilots and see who's out there. Um, so the final event for Drone Safety Awareness Week, if you're in the Minnesota area, and this did go national, so there might be folks that aren't in Minnesota, but if you're here in Minnesota, we are going to um, do a fly-in this Saturday. We're going to meet at 10 a.m. at Century College. They are going to give us a tour of their fabrication lab, which is pretty cool. If you've not seen one of these labs, I highly recommend it. Uh, and then at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a fly-in. So this is a uh, field, a flying field that was specifically designated for um, hobby flyers, kind of focusing on the FPV, but um, can be used by any drone pilots. Uh, we will have grills on site. You can bring your drone. And uh, we will have uh, the drone area controlled. So there'll be a certain number of people who can fly at a time. And then you can either come bring your drone or come to watch if you're new at drones. It is kid friendly. I will have my kids there. Um, they've been to a number, number of these. Uh, so feel free to bring your children as well. So we're gonna then switch gears over and watch the video. The way, in order to get um, experts in each of these areas, we taped a number of these in advance. And then when available, we'll have the speakers here for questions for the Q&A portion. Um, so we will switch to the video now. 
And this was made by our one of our local law enforcement officers, Dave Tim. He's a sergeant up at Baxter Police Department and has done quite a bit with drones. You may have seen him at one of our previous webinars and seminars. Uh, he's a great resource. They're doing a lot of really good things with drones. Um, of course, if you're in Minnesota, you're well aware of the um, recent uh, rescue of the boy in the cornfield. Um, we did not cover that in this because it was covered extensively. So Dave will talk about a number of other ways that they're using drones with law enforcement. And then we will do a Q&A session at the end. So this video is about six minutes. Um, so sit tight, enjoy, and then we'll catch up when it's done. Use of unmanned aerial vehicles or drones is something that is getting a lot more attention by public safety. The use of drones by law enforcement, fire or emergency medical, search and rescue, and even inspection purposes is growing substantially. My name is Sergeant David Tim, and I'm proud to say that I'm able to use drones for good. Drones are not just being used in Minnesota, but throughout the whole country for a wide variety of tasks, whether it be looking for a lost or missing person, tracking a fugitive, inspection of a crime scene or reconstruction of a crash scene, or inspecting an area that has potential safety hazards such as disaster response, storm response, or fire scene management. Because technology is evolving, we are able to use this technology to provide more efficient service and more effective service at a lower cost to the public. Previously, we would have to rely on manned aircraft, whether it be fixed wing or helicopters, to perform the tasks that we are now able to do with small drones. In public safety, drones usage ranges from large and enterprise industrial machines capable of carrying multiple payloads that have zoom cameras, infrared cameras, hazardous material sensors, spotlights, or other type of payloads that are able to help us gather information. Additionally, on the other side, we can also use small consumer grade technology that just is known for having a good camera to be able to document scenes. One of the ways that we're using our cameras as a flying aerial platform is for reconstructing accidents. Traffic safety is a large goal throughout all of public safety and being able to get more information about the types of crashes that are occurring, where they are occurring and how they are occurring is vital information. Now the obvious use is just to get an aerial photograph of the scene that can assist in reconstruction or mapping. But what we're also finding is that Flying the route of the driver or the perceived viewpoint of the driver with a real-time view similar to the actual lighting conditions and hazards that were present at the time of the crash is proving to be vital for purposes of engineering or education regarding our traffic safety ways. Additionally, we're also able to use drones to search for lost or missing people. Even in no light or low light situations, we're able to use cameras that can use body heat or thermal imaging cameras to help look for a missing person or a lost child in the woods. You may have heard about a recent story in the media where a volunteer pilot used the same type of technology that public safety are using to locate a missing boy and his dog in the woods, bringing a positive outcome to a very scary situation. We can also use drones to help avoid dangerous situations. We want to gather as much information as possible, such as after a storm or other disaster, being able to get a real-time view of the scene to provide that information back to the command center and emergency management can be vital. And it can also be done much quicker and more efficient with a drone versus waiting for traditional aircraft. Even a simple fire scene, whether it be a structure fire or a large area wilderness fire, having that real-time observation from the sky and being able to give that information live to the command is proving vital so we can better focus efforts to provide better response to fighting that fire. Recently, we had a structure fire that spread to a wooded terrain area, a rural area that was difficult to navigate by foot due to the hills, valleys, and ravines. We we're able to use the drone to provide real-time information to make sure that the fire was contained and not spreading, as well as use the thermal camera to determine the actual source of the fire by looking at the heat signature of the ground. Drones are proving to be a very valuable asset to public safety, and we encourage you to learn more about how public safety is using drones by contacting your local public safety agency. Additionally, drones are becoming more and more popular amongst us all. You may have privacy concerns, and those issues can be addressed with your local law enforcement agency. If you have questions 
about the regulations of drones commercially, you can also reach out to the Minnesota Department of Transportation that regulates the commercial use of drones. If you're flying as a recreational flyer or a commercial flyer, please fly safely. Don't fly over people or traffic and make sure that you're maintaining a safe altitude to separate yourself from any objects or hazards. Whenever you fly, make sure that you're utilizing resources to make sure it's safe to fly where you are. Using your smart device, make sure you check before you fly or a reputable app of your choice to make sure you're getting real-time information to make sure you're not flying in any restricted areas or any areas where it is illegal for you to fly. Last, but probably most important, is that there is vital manned aircraft that is being flown every day across the entire state of Minnesota. And it's your responsibility as a remote pilot of a drone to yield to manned aircraft and be aware of manned aircraft at all times. You never know when an emergency air ambulance may need to fly to a scene or firefighting efforts may need to have a DNR airplane response. Those services cannot function if there is a drone in the air that will not yield to manned aircraft. Not only is it against the law to fly recklessly or interfere with manned aircraft or emergency efforts, it is also incredibly unsafe and puts people in danger, whether it be the victims first responders are trying to rescue or the first responders themselves. Please do not interfere with emergency scenes. This could be a crash scene, a fire scene, emergency medical, or any other sort of disaster please stay away. Manned or unmanned, private, hobbyist or commercial or public safety, we all share the skies and it is up to us to make sure that we do our part to make sure that we can maintain safety throughout our skies. Thank you very much for watching and fly safe. Great, thanks, Dave. Um, so Dave could could not be here with us this evening. Um, he is a police officer and has some other duties to attend to this evening. So uh, he is not here, but we can answer some questions for him. Um, I just have a few quick slides. So he did mention emergency operations and drones. Um, it's been in the news quite a bit. The manned aircraft cannot fly when drones are around. It has prevented some search and rescue efforts. It has been an issue out in California. Um, it's awfully cold but here in Minnesota, but we do have a lot of fires here in the summer. Um, also a lot of uh, medical helicopters. Penalties are very high. People have been fined. Criminal prosecution is an option. The, you know, it, it seems, you know, silly. Everybody knows not to do this, but there's an accident a couple blocks away. You hear sirens, you see lights. You think, I might just pop up my drone. I wonder if it's a house fire or an accident. If you pop that drone up and take a look, a rescue helicopter coming in may not be able to pick somebody up. So please, please, please put the remote down and do not fly if you see emergency, uh, an emergency happening or um, see lights or anything, just don't fly the drone. Look at the newspaper tomorrow instead. Uh, a few notes just on the basics of drones, since we got a, a few new people here. Um, this, there's three things that you need to really know with drones in the FAA. You have to get a pilot certificate if you're flying commercially. That's under uh, Part 107. If you are flying as a hobbyist, there are similar rules to follow. Um, you have to register your aircraft, whether you're a hobbyist or commercial, uh, and it has to be marked on the exterior of your aircraft. Uh, rules, some basic rules to remember, stay below 400 feet. And the reason for that is that manned aircraft generally fly above 500 feet. Um, the helicopters will be different, so will ag sprayers, but generally you're safe if you're below 400. Uh, you have to weigh less than 55 pounds, your aircraft has to weigh less than 55 pounds, that includes the payload. Stay within visual line of sight, don't fly over people. Uh, you have to have at least three miles of visibility and stay out of the clouds, um, specifically it's 500 feet below and three miles of visibility. And then you have to have approval to fly in controlled airspace. And we'll touch on that in one slide in just a minute. And then there are special requirements for now if you're flying commercially. Um, you have to have special lights and you have to get an FA authorization for that. So, and this is new for hobbyists um, and for commercial. If you are flying in controlled airspace, you have to have authorization to do so. And there are a number of ways you can get that authorization. 
um, specifically through these apps. And they call this L-A-A-N-C, they pronounce it Lance, it's the official FAA pronunciation. But it's an app on your phone and there's a number of service suppliers that you can get this, this information from. If you go on the FAA's website, it's down there on the bottom right, fba.gov slash UAS, and um, go to the Lance tab, you can get the list of different suppliers. And each of these service suppliers will show you where you are and whether or not you're in controlled airspace. And if you are in controlled airspace, it will give you an altitude that you can request authorization um, to get. Now, this is super important, not only for area metro areas, um, but there are a lot of towered and controlled airports in rural areas. And with the presidential election coming up, um, there are a lot of these VIPs, specifically the president and vice president, when they travel, the airspace around where they land gets shut down. So if you are going to be flying your drone and President Trump or Vice President Pence are coming into town, um, they will shut that airspace down and it will be notified to you when you open up your app. So please, please uh, check your app every time, even if you know there's not a controlled air, um, airport around you, it's still good to know if there's in these TFRs, they're called come up for fires, they come up for presidential events and, and other events. So. Um, we like to refer to big sky, little plane, you know, you'll never hit anybody. The sky is so big, there's so much space, but it does happen. Uh, in, for example, in Minnesota, there's more than 370 airports. At the center of each one of those little yellow circles is an airport. Uh, so there's a lot of airspace to look out for. In this particular example, um, the blue gridded area is the controlled airspace. So that's where you need to request authorization. Um, if you're interested in more information about um, Lance, you can certainly send me a message or um, we'll open up the chat in just a minute here uh, and feel free to ask questions. So in Minnesota, um, stepping away from the FAA role and into the MnDOT role, we do have uh, additional requirements here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota was designated as a state level state aviation regulator back in the 1920s and as part of that state statute it requires us to do licensing tax and registration for um, for aircraft uh, and when drones came around and they were designated aircraft they then fell into that um, so we also do a lot of safety outreach as part of um, part of our efforts so per the minnesota state statute all commercial operations that involve aircraft the aircraft has to be registered by the state they also need to be insured and you have to obtain a state commercial operations license there are some caveats to this if you have questions give us a call or find us the website's down there at the bottom um, and then of course we read it that you must comply with all the faa rules as well uh, additionally, beyond MnDOT and the FAA, there are some communities here in Minnesota that have local UAS ordinances. Neither MnDOT nor the FAA review these. Um, it is your job to take a look at these when you're flying. MnDOT does store them in a repository when we know about them. We don't know about all of them. Um, so if you find one that's not on there, please let us know. But it is the pilot's responsibility to look in their community and understand what the local ordinances involve. Uh, again, you can find the link that we know about on the DOT site uh, referenced there. There are a number of resources for people who are flying drones or looking to get into drones. First, find your, find your local flying club. There are traditional RC hobby clubs. There are new FPV flying clubs. There are a lot of clubs on Facebook. Um, there are groups on Meetup, all, you know, all different kinds of places. So find a flying club. It's more fun when you have friends. Uh, the FAA site is very helpful. You can go to fa.gov slash UAS uh, to find all the FAA's information. And then fasafety.gov is where you signed up for this event. We do host these throughout the year. And um, we do things in person. We do webinars. It's a great way to uh, learn what's coming up and what's new and what's happening in the drone world. And then again, there's the MnDOT Aeronautics link as well. Any questions, you can always contact the FISDO, FSDO, that is the local FAA office. Um, I think they're actually changing their acronyms, but uh, anyways, it's the local FAA office, or you can call the main helpline or email the UAS helpline. I have gotten responses, so those are a good resource um, as well, even though they're generic uh, contacts. So that is it for, whoops, for um, the presentation today. We wanted to keep them short so that we could talk with folks. Uh, I'm actually, since we have a small group, I'm going to take you guys off of
mic. I'm going to unmute everybody if, and we'll see how this works. Does anybody have any questions about law, how law enforcement uses drones or drones in general? Okay, I'm unmuting you guys and it's... I have to do one by one. So if you don't want to be, if you, I'm unmuting everybody. If you could go ahead and mute yourself after I unmute you. Um, otherwise, you can chime in and uh, do questions. Let us know. If it gets noisy with background noise, I'll mute you all again. No questions. Okay. Um, any comments here below? Questions. Any idea how many counties and sheriffs in Minnesota have drones? Uh, it's quite a few. So um, when the um, search and rescue of the boy uh, last week or so happened, um, I happened to be at the Towards Zero Death Conference the next week. And that's all where law, uh, a number of law enforcement organizations get together and they talk about how to make roads safer um, and support the public. And we, Mandat was there with a the booth talking about drones and it was a significant number of law enforcement agencies were getting drones or were going to get drones. And most of them, their number one focus was search and rescue. Um, they wanted to be able to deploy their thermal drones when they needed to find somebody. They wanted to be able to search the water. Uh, they wanted to be able to, um, you know, look at fires and hot spots. So I don't know how many, um, what percentage or how many it is, but I would say a significant number either have them or would like to get them, and they are almost primarily focused on search and rescue efforts. Um, at this time, this is Robert, all of my are strictly remote fly. None of them are autonomous. Great. So um, you, I, I assume, Robert, then yours are mostly um, home builds and not the typical DJI that we see with the new wave of drones. That's great. It's a great way to get started. It's a great way to work on your stick skills, especially if you're going to move into something like a DJI. Nope, oh, some are. Some are traditional RC. Very cool. Do we have any other questions? Am I familiar with Customs Border Patrol at Grand Forks that can do civilian search and rescue in Minnesota? I am not familiar with that group in particular. I do know that there are agencies that work together. For search and rescue, I don't know about those folks um, specifically, so I would have to look that up. David, feel free to email me if you've got some something I should follow up on. All right, we'll give folks one more question. Uh, oh, so Robert heard that DJI drones will be ADSB equipped. So some of them, it's kind of like a mock ADSB, Robert. Um, a lot of them have them already, but uh, it's not true ADSB as far as I understand. Although I could be wrong, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with DJI's. Any last questions? ADS, uh, there you go. So Logan's an expert in these drones. He says DJI drones are equipped with ADS-B in only they do not broadcast. There will be a new technology coming out called UTM, Unmanned Traffic Management, and that will be a way to identify and de-conflict drones 
um, with the goal towards deconflicting all airspace of manned and unmanned aircraft. That is a project, a large project um, with a number of players from NASA to local. So they only receive, yes, they do receive notification. Um, so UTM will allow air traffic controllers and others to send and receive or to see and avoid, detect and avoid other aircraft in the future. That's under development um, and we're looking forward to that in the future. You've heard a bit, great. Um, with that, uh, we'll close it out. So we do have a different, we, the goal is to keep these webinars short every night, uh, let people ask questions, cover one small topic, and then a little bit of safety stuff. We hope to see everybody on Saturday at the fly-in. And if you have any other questions, let me know. If you would like um, Wings credit for these, please send me an email. I've got your names here on the list of attendees, but send me a note as well if you if you find a minute, so I can make sure I get you. Um, Wings is a great program to stay up to date on pilot information, and we hope to see you regularly. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in, and have a good night.